Hello and welcome dear students, professionals and learners to the very informative topic that is stability testing for pharmaceuticals. So this video is a basic part one of the stability testing video series and it will cover the basics and the guidelines which are mainly related to the stability testing for pharmaceuticals. It is one of the most important topic in the pharmaceutical industry and the knowledge of stability testing is very much required for the professionals. So first of all we will see what is stability. You all know that what is the meaning of stable. Stable means what? So based on that stable meaning, stability meaning can be drawn out. So stability means ability of the drug product or drug substance to maintain its physical, chemical, microbiological, therapeutical properties within the predetermined specifications or required specifications that is quality over a given period of time that is shelf life or expiry period or for drug substances it will be retest period under the influence of the various environmental factors such as temperature, humidity and light. So simply you can say that the drug product must be stable throughout the stability period or expiry period that is also called as shelf life period. Why? Because the stability affects the safety and efficacy of the drug product and safety and efficacy is the most important requirement for any of the drug product. Then why stability testing is important? The stability testing is important to establish shelf life because without doing stability study you cannot give the shelf life or retest period to the formulation and also to the drug that is drug substance. Stability testing is also required to give storage conditions. Based on the stability data, you can give the storage recommendation for the drug substances and drug products. Then to ensure the safety, efficacy and quality. Stability testing is required to fulfill the regulatory filings requirement. It is required to review quality of the product. Then development of suitable packaging and container systems are based on the stability testing and stability study results. So now we will see what are the stability facets. The stability is required to be in terms of the chemical stability, physical stability, microbiological stability, therapeutic stability and biological uh, stability that is toxicological stability and biopharmaceutical stability. So all these type of facets or requirements are there then only we can say that the product is stable throughout the expiry period or shelf life. So one by one we will see what is chemical stability. Chemical stability is nothing but the loss of potency or change in the potency or assay during the storage period. If the assay get decreased that is loss of potency or if the assay get increased sometime for the injectable formulations or the products which are stored in semi permeable containers for them the assay may increase also because of loss of the water. Then physical stability is like color, odor, appearance and description. So that is required to be maintained throughout the shelf life. Then microbiological. There should not be any microbiological contamination or microbial growth into the formulation like yeast and mold, fungi, aerobic anaerobic bacteria, 
and any other microbial load should not be there. The microbiological load is much more important for sterile formulations. Then therapeutic stability. That means the product should give similar clinical effects throughout the stability period or expiry period. The clinical effects depend on dissolution, biopharmaceuticals like loss of activity, poor bioavailability. If we are making a soft gelatin formulation, for example, I am taking this and we have dissolved the API during formulation and on stability period or storage time or shelf life period that API get crystallized or it get recrystallized. So that time dissolution will be hampered and based on that dissolution there will be loss of activity. So therapeutic stability is much important. Then toxicological stability. There should not be any increase in the impurities or there should not be any degradation or if it is there it should be within the limits given by the regulatory guidelines so that you can say that the product is safe and effective. Then coming to the stability study and product development stages. See stability is not only performed on the final formulation but stability studies are important and are done throughout the product life cycle. So during research and development stages stability is done. During filing or submission batches the stability is done and also after approval of the product these stability studies are going on. So one by one we will see first is research and development stage. So in research and development stage stability is done to get the finalized formulation or drug substance and process. So testing APIs and early formulations. Then stress testing of API and drug products. Stress testing involves the stability studies with higher accelerated conditions to study the intrinsic stability of the API and the formulations. Then photo stability. It involves the study of effect of light. Hygroscopic city studies that involves the effect of moisture. Then open pot studies are also done. These are called as open exposure studies. Stability studies to reflect API form. During API form selection, these stability studies are done to get understanding of the most stable and least stable form of the API. Stability studies to detect formulation composition, challenges and process challenges based on the stability studies to select the formulation composition and process. Then in new stability studies are done to support packaging system. Also stability studies are done to determine uh, the which packaging system is best suited for the formulation. Stability studies are done to screen API and formulations. Then intermediate stability is also done to know which intermediates are more stable. Excipient compatibility studies are also done to determine the compatibility of the API with excipient and the stability testing is also done to determine the degradation pathways for the APIs. So mainly the force degradation studies are done to determine the degradation pathways. Then on pilot scale or pilot stage for submission, generally the stability studies are called as the formal stability studies on primary batches for product submission. These are called as formal stability studies and these involve the predictive stability study for expiry period. And predictive stability study involves the accelerated stability testing. Then photo stability studies are done on the drug product. In use stability studies are done 
whole time stability studies are done open pot stability studies are there then if the product is tablet formulation and it has a break line that time stability of the split tablet part is also done to support the claim and polymorphic studies are done on to the formulation so polymorphic studies involve form retention and form conversion studies these are done by the xrd studies then on post approval of the application once the product get approved still the stability are required as per the commitments given by the applicant to the regulatory authorities then whenever there are a scale up and post approval changes that time stability studies are required if there are process change formulation composition change api vendor change or manufacturing site change that time stability studies are required then the routine manufacturing also requires so routine stability testing some samples are taken out of the batches and these are loaded on the stability then stability studies are performed whenever there are changes or deviations to the established products and the procedures so mainly there are ics guidelines which gives the complete understanding of the stability requirements so from q1a to q1f stability guidelines are there q1a q1b c d e and f these are the main guidelines by ich so ich q1a this deals with the stability testing of new drug substances and new drug products and it recommend it gives recommendation on stability testing protocols including temperature humidity and trial duration of climatic zone 1 and 2 requirements for stability testing climatic zones 3 and 4 in order to minimize the different storage conditions for submission of a global dosier so as per ich the these guidelines are streamlined then ich q1b this deals with the photo stability study mainly this guideline gives the information on how to evaluate the light sensitivity and stability of the new drugs and new products then ich q1c this deals mainly with the stability testing for new doses forms new doses forms of the already approved medicines and it defines the circumstances under which reduced stability data can be accepted then q1d q1d gives the information on bracketing and matrixing design for stability testing of new drug substances and new drug products so mainly the stability testing by bracketing and matrixing design are conducted in accordance with the principles outlined in the main stability guideline but this guideline is given to have reduce reduce number of samples and those samples can be reduced by the design principles of bracketing and matrix then is q1e it deals with the evaluation for the stability data so these ics guidelines gives clear cut understanding about the what are the requirements how the stability studies are done what parameters are to be tested and in q1e it gives how that data should be evaluated so this document that is ich q1e extend the main stability guideline by explaining possible situations where extrapolation of retest period or shelf lives beyond the real time data may be appropriate so this deals with stability data evaluation and extrapolation for determining the shelf life it also gives examples of statistical approaches for stability data analysis then ich q1f is also listed at the ich guide ich website that deals with stability testing of active pharmaceutical ingredients and finished pharmaceutical products so the ic steering committee endorses the withdrawal of the q1f guideline in 
June 2006 and decided to leave definition of storage conditions in climatic zone 3 and 4 to respective regions and WHO. Then another set of guidelines is there which is provided by the Committee for Proprietary Medicinal Products. In short, you can refer it as CPMP. So, CPMP guidelines are there. CPMP QWP 57696. This deals with stability testing of applications for variations to the marketing authorization. Then 614203. It deals with the stability testing for active substances and medicinal products manufactured in climatic zone 3 and 4 to be marketed in the euro. Then 60996. It is it it gives guidance on declaration of storage conditions for products and active substances. Then 12202 revision 1. Note on guidance on stability testing of existing active substances related finished products. Then 07296. This, this is a note for guidance on start of stability, start of shelf life of finished doses form. Then 293499. Note for guidance for in use stability testing for human medicinal products. So this guideline is explained in detail in the another video which is named as inu stability testing so for this guideline separate video is there then cpmp qwp 57696 it deals mainly on the guidance on stability testing for type 2 variation to marketing authorization these variations are nothing but like scale up and post approval changes for us market so these are called as variation in the Europe market. Then 15996 note for guidance on maximum shelf life for sterile products after first opening of the first opening or following reconstitution. So these are the general information about the stability study. So in summary we have seen stability study basics then guidelines related to stability study mainly ICH and CPMP guidelines. You can read these guidelines in detail to get more information. Then we have seen what is the importance of stability study and why stability study is required. So the references for this video are the guidelines related to stability testing. In the stability testing video series, many more videos will be coming. So, please stay tuned to this Pharma Learning India channel. Do subscribe and keep watching the videos. Thanks for watching the video.